goodness. Oh my goodness. Okay. Hello. Going to try not to knock my entire setup over before I even get started. Hello there. I'm continuing my illustration from last week. So this is what I worked on last week. I've got my little skull and my little hairball flowers all drawn and most of the color put down. I just barely started the actual flowers last time though. So I'm going to give those just a little bit more color before I call them done enough to start using the water on. So in case you didn't see last week, or as a reminder, I'm using my ink tense water soluble ink pencils, which is a bit of a mouthful, but that's what they are. They get a lot darker once I apply the water. So I go in with a very light touch. Oh boy, Alan's here to troll me. <laughs> Gotta love it. Thanks. Thanks, friend. So that here is a little bit darker. <laughs> the only reason you get up on Tuesdays, the only reason I get up on Tuesdays is because my children won't let me sleep in, so I kind of have to. I try to sleep in on the weekends and they literally like, they wake up at the same time every single day because they're children and that's, that's just what children do. Um, so like, I'll be trying to sleep in because we don't have to do school. So it's like, okay, we don't have to be up super early. This is great, right? No, they come thundering down the hall at 6.30. I'm just like. <laughs> yes, so I do have um, up on my other monitor, I have a couple of reference, Im reference images that I'm using to make sure that I am getting this right. This was actually the first time that I tried to draw a rabbit skull. So I definitely relied pretty heavily on the reference for this because I was not really sure what I was doing otherwise. I'm going to add a little bit of blue into these. This one's back here. I want a lot more blue. Ones that are further back. So yeah, I've got a, a I had a really hard time actually finding good um, reference because this whole part of their nasal cavity is like very lacy and delicate. And so a lot of the um, images that I found online, this had been either it was from like a cast or a reproduction of a rabbit skull. And this section was either completely filled in or like completely missing. And so finding a section where finding a, a reference image where that section with all that really delicate lacy bits was actually pretty still intact was actually pretty difficult. And, and, you know, for the rest of the, like, I'd find somewhere it looked really good, but then the rest of the skull was not really great for reference. Like it was at a lousy angle or just wasn't very clear. So it took a little bit of digging to make sure that I got all of the information that I needed. And a lot of times too, I'll end up, you know, for, for drawings that I'm doing in slightly more than the two hours that I spend on the stream <laughs> to complete one of these, then sometimes I'll get like multiple reference images and just kind of have to composite them together to get all the information that I need visually. I'm getting a little bit of pink in here. These flowers are pretty light colored, so I don't want to make them, I don't want to go too heavy and then have them be too dark and then regret everything. So going with a pretty light touch. This whatever this part of the flower is called. I Every week I forget to look it up. Every week I get on the stream and I'm like, the, the sticky outy part of the flower. You know what I'm talking about. I can't remember whether it's the pistil or the stamen, but it's one of those. The part that sticks out in the middle. You know, that one. Okay, I think at this point, 
I know I had finished putting down colors on the skull and I had only had a little bit left to do on the flowers. So I think at this point I can start activating these with water, which is the fun part. So I've got a little cup of water, just I have a little cup of water just out of frame here and what I'm gonna do is take my watercolor brush this is actually my inking brush but it is in fact a watercolor brush get a little bit of water on there and I don't want it oversaturated so I'll often just keep a paper towel in my off hand right next to where I'm working so that I can make sure that I don't have too wet a brush on here and then we just come in here and start to activate that water soluble ink pencil. And this stuff dries really quickly, so you have to work fairly quickly or work in very small controlled sections, like I'm kind of doing right now with this little section of the cranium, um, so you don't end up with lap marks. And the other thing is that if you, once you hit it with the water, and it dries, unlike water soluble watercolor pencils, the water soluble ink pencils, once they've been hit with water they're, and they dry, they're fixed. They're not going, that line is not going to move again if I hit it with water again, unlike watercolor pencils where I could go back and rework that and it would be wet and move around again. That is now going to stay there is now permanent, which also informs the approach you have to take. And I'm hoping my internet remains at least somewhat stable. We are experiencing extremely high winds here and my power and internet have been blinking all day. So like because of that property of the ink tents, I'm going to do like that line that I want to leave fairly defined. Have the rest of this section blend kind of nice and gentle from it. And now that that's got a chance to dry for a minute, I'm going to come around and do this part so that it doesn't move and it gives me that nice defined line still. It's very tricksy. And I do occasionally forget and mess up. <laughs> it's a thing that happens. Skull is such a weird, complicated shape. Well, technically, it's a wild hair skull. Slightly different than a rabbit, to my understanding.
goodness. Okay. I'm actually going to take my teensy weensy brush to do some of these little bits. Okay, my point is not, I'm not getting much of a good point on there. There we go. So that this doesn't just turn into a big muddled mess when I come back over it. Because if I do these little details first, then they won't move afterwards. After they dry. Some of these little holes in the skull here. This little hole down here. Okay. Now that those have had a minute to dry, now I can come over and whoops, not dry enough. Not dry enough. All right, like as usual with water, anything water-based. You didn't mean to do that. Pull the water up as quick as you can with paper towel. <laughs> yeah, so um, how you make sure that it doesn't bleed together is that since, or you know, you don't do what I just did, which was go at it while it was still too wet, but it does dry pretty quickly. So as long as you do like one small section, and let it dry and then come back around it dries and it fixes so once that's dry i can go all around it and it, i can go right over it with water and it won't move but you do have to make sure it's all the way dry which is what i just messed up there whoops whoops um, but that was always the frustration i had with uh watercolor pencils is that they didn't fix once they dried. So if you went back over them with water, they would start to run again. Even if you just kind of just barely skirted up against them, they would start to run again. I would get so frustrated by that. And these don't do that, which I like. Right. Is this dry now? Yeah, this is all dry in here now. Let's try to finish what I was doing. That's better. See, and you can see now that that dried, that all of those marks that I had already made didn't move. And the same thing should work in here with where I've done these little pockets and they don't move. that I can see is still wet, so I'm going to give that a minute before I go around there. Go. Let's see, that is still a little bit on the damp side. And you also uh, have to really control the amount of water you have in your brush, which is why I have the, the paper towel right here, so that it doesn't get too overloaded with water, because then it'll start to run too, just because the water is just going to want to go everywhere and the paper is only going to absorb so much at one time.
Whoops. Okay, it would also help if my drawing board would not try to escape while I was trying to work. That would be slow. I really like how that came out. I like how that color blend came out. I wasn't sure how well that was going to work. That worked really well, actually. I'm pretty pleased with that. I like vaguely remembered that I had put some pink and some yellow in there, and I was like, oh, is this going to work? I don't know. We'll find out. This great big jaw on here. Uh, a little bit, yes. <laughs> Do I ever feel like I'm going crazy drawing and talking to myself? Um, yes, a little bit. That's why I appreciate when people do leave comments, because then at least it gives me something to talk about, and I feel a little bit less like I'm just talking to myself. It's about a million times worse since I have had no other adults living in my house with me <laughs> in the last few months. It's like, oh, I guess I have to go on the internet and pretend to talk to other grown-ups. I don't know what happened with this little nub. I don't like it though. That's something we're gonna have to try to correct a little bit on the next pass because yuck, it just turned into this weird little yellow nub and I'm not sure what's going on there, but it just, I don't like it. <laughs> I appreciate it, Alan. <laughs> I desperately need it some days. Oh, geez. Like because it dries so quickly, larger areas you gotta work pretty fast in to not get awkward lap marks where you can see where one section overlaps another and dried funny. So if you find like little natural lines to break it across, like this little change of planes inside the eye socket. That's what you got to look for. Right. 
think most of the way through the skull. I've just got a couple little bits in the eye socket here left. All right, so that is the skull. I don't think I missed anywhere. I think I got everything. It looks like I did. It, yeah, it's, well, the biggest thing when I'm hopping around is just um, managing the the wet areas and like the active, managing the wet areas and the active areas. So like if I do, um, so basically it's three different considerations. One is I want to try to work as much as possible from the upper left to the lower right because I'm right-handed and that way I won't drag my hand through a wet section and smear a bunch of colored ink everywhere. Um, so that's usually where it starts. The other consideration with this particular medium is that I have to work small sections at a time in order to not create lap marks but also I want to make sure that I don't always have the sections touching each other so that while this section is drying I don't accidentally cause this section to bleed into it while they're both still wet if I want to keep them delineated from each other. Um, so I kind of have to hop around like okay I'll do this section then I'll do a section over here that's not actually touching it so that they both get a chance to dry without interfering with each other. Um, and then yeah the other thing is just the the way that this medium works and wanting to make sure that I get like those those dark sections done and fixed and then do like a lighter section over them so that the dark section doesn't bleed and completely like mess up the lighter section. So yeah, it's kind of balancing all of that. It's it's a it's a lot of things. <laughs> it's many things. All right. So now I'm gonna get to start on the flowers and I hope that they are even close to the right color. <laughs> That's a promising start right there. There's supposed to be a not ridiculously overwhelming purple. Like a nice soft purple. That's a nice start. Oh, that's a little bit out of frame. Hello. Hey, Barney. <laughs> now you're going to ask some crazy questions. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. I don't, I, I'm a little bit afraid. What is Alan going to ask? That's going to be a crazy question. This is a little a little closed blossom, one that hasn't opened up quite yet. What's the most awkward thing I've ever been paid to draw? Never been asked to draw. Okay. Um, hmm. 
Um, I have had one semi-regular commission um, customer. I have not worked with them for a few years now, but they would frequently ask for things that like were seemingly innocuous, but the common thread between them, because I did a fair amount of work for this person, um, and the common thread between them revealed that there was clearly a fetish going on and like the images themselves like i said were were fairly innocuous and didn't really like were typically not anything that you'd be like oh that's weird it was just the fact that there was one repeated element in all of these different images across lots of different genres um but yeah, a repeated element kept coming up that was like, oh, this is this is a thing for you, isn't it? And that was just like a little bit awkward. <laughs> it's just a little bit awkward because it like very it was very quickly apparent. And then you're like, do I say anything? Do I not say anything? Like, I feel a little weird about this. But then the stuff that I'm being asked to draw is not like inherently weird. It, it, yeah. But I think just the not being sure whether I should say anything or not part of it and it just being this elephant in the room is part of what made it so awkward. It's just like, uh... As far as any the most awkward thing I've been asked to draw, um, I don't know. I don't think I've actually been asked to, asked to draw anything really super awkward. I often get requests that just baffle me of like, why did you come to me for this? Like that, it's not really awkward. It's just like confusing. I had one convention I went to where I had like three separate people commission me for Mega Man illustrations. And I'm like, what about my style says Mega Man to you? Like, I don't understand. <laughs> I was just like, what is happening here? <laughs> why is this a thing that's happening? That's a thing that happens is sometimes I just get, I get people requesting work that I'm like, I, I don't understand why you're coming to me with this. <laughs> don't know what inspired this. I'm trying to read the, my, my light is like blocking half of these questions. Okay. Now I can see everything. I think I'm caught up now. But no, believe it or not, no one's ever asked me to draw porn. I, I can scarcely believe it myself. Kind of makes me wonder what I'm what I'm doing wrong <laughs> as an artist that it's never come up. I guess another socially awkward thing that happens all the time is that people are always like, um, there's this thing. It's a very common thing for um, it's a very common thing for artists is that especially female comic artists is that we get this question from like everyone we know of like oh hey I have an idea for a children's book would you like to work on it with me and these people like literally have never written anything before have never published anything before have no idea what they're asking they just assume that because you like to draw things and they have a vague idea for a children's book that this is a thing that'll happen <laughs> And it's just very socially awkward to have your, like, great aunt or whatever be like, you should work on a children's book with me. And to have to be like, uh, no. <laughs> no, I shall not do 100 hours of unpaid labor that's not going to go anywhere. Love you, though. Bye. <laughs> 
and that's happened more times than I can count. I've also, I've had people that like started to pay me to do like children's book um, treatments and then like flaked out on me and didn't finish paying me. And that was fun. That's a thing that happens. That at least was not somebody I was related to. So it didn't make like going to Thanksgiving awkward or anything. All right, I have to do a little green bits on the flower. And whoops, I'm out of frame. Let's scoot this down here. Well, that's a nice bright springy green. I like how that came out. Very nice and vibrant against these blossoms, too. Down to the last little blossom down here. Yay. All right. It's looking good. Five minutes. A, a coach's. <laughs> thanks Alan I'm glad you enjoy it it was nice having you thanks for the good questions those were really awesome actually um coach's corner what what are you is, are you like volunteering to harass me Bryce is that what's going on okay so I finished with the application of water I'm gonna move my little water Hanging away from where my elbow is so I don't cause a disaster while I'm working on this. So now I'm going to find my kneaded eraser and find a section of my kneaded eraser that is not too gross. That part's not looking too gross. Okay, that's pretty decent. And then I am going to yeah, it feels pretty dry. I'm going to come through and lift out some of my pencil, which will just kind of lighten the whole thing up. Get some of the stray pencil marks. That'll clean it up a lot too. Make everything just generally look a lot lighter and cleaner, a little less sketchy. All right. 
So where are we at on time? We're at 35 minutes. All right, these I usually have go on for approximately one hour. Because by the end of an hour, I need to get up and stretch. You need to get up and stretch. We, we should all like go get a drink of water or something. You know, all that good stuff. All right. I am now going to do a final little pass on this with colored pencils in order to finish pulling out some of the details and firm some of that up. I'm picking out some of my favorite colors to do this with. So let's see, I've got Tuscan red and burnt umber and that's chocolate. I have a bigger chocolate. I do have a bigger chocolate. That chocolate is very, if it's, it's just quite tiny. And yellow ochre. And I'm looking for one more before I get started in this mess. This mess. Oh, okay. I guess I'll take dark brown as well, but that's not the one I'm looking for. Whoop. It's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for indigo blue. And, right? Am I like, I can't be out of it. There's no way. There's no way. Oh, oh, I have a, I have an extremely tiny one. I guess I need to order some more. I guess I need to order some more pencils. I found a big one, but I need to sharpen it. Okay, we can do that. We can make that happen. But I probably should order another one if I'm on my last one. That would just be prudent. I don't want to completely run out since I um, don't live near any art supply stores. All right. So what we're going to do is take our indigo blue, and we're just going to start making a few of these shadows just a little bit darker. Provide just a little bit more depth and definition. As you can see too, the colored pencils, I can get a fine, very fine point on, and so I can get a much sharper, more defined edge than I did with the water-soluble ink pencils, which don't hold quite as fine a point. And then once you hit them with the water, they kind of move around a little bit, just generally can't get the same kind of fine detail with, or at least I can't. I'm not saying nobody can. <laughs> I'm just saying I can't get that close, that fine of definition with them. So I've oof, developed this multi-step process to make sure that I get the details and definition that I want. back in here, get a little bit in here. So as you can see, that just kind of starts to deepen a few of these shadows a little bit. And add a little bit of the Tuscan red over it so that it's a little bit warmer shadow. It's not quite so cool. In some places you might want a cooler shadow and so maybe you wouldn't add the Tuscan red, maybe you just add some brown or you just wouldn't add as much of the Tuscan red, but we kind of don't want this to get 
too cool. I'm going to leave that cool because I like the cool color pushing that part of the job back a little bit. So that we're going to leave. This I'm going to pull out a little bit. Push some of this back. Just a little. Try to fix this business. It's weird, poorly defined thing going on over here. A little bit of yellow ochre in some of these spots too. Also helps to warm it up. All right, and I'm going to take chocolate and pick out some of these little dental details here. is on here. Get out of there. All right, pull out some of these details a little more. Little center line on the skull here. Some of these bits in this lacy part of the nas nasal cavity are further back than others, so we're going to kind of break that up a little bit so it doesn't look so much like just a solid structure, because it's not. It's a bunch of little pieces. Define some of those edges a little bit more. There, I think that helped. I think that helped define that a little bit. bit in here for spots. I like 
like how that has turned out. Well, it's looking pretty good. Okay, so we are at 45-ish minutes. I'm going to try to get this flower done, and then we'll see how close we are to done. What is this? Peach beige. Add a little of that to some of the teeth. Feel like I need something not quite as strong as some of the other colors. That's better. I like that. I like how that looked. Okay. So flowers. Coming with the indigo first. Enhance some of the definition in here. some of these lines a little bit of like a waver to them because these harebells have almost like a papery look to their petals. Let me get some of that texture across. As I bang into things with my head grief. All right, I'm going to kind of let those ones that are further back, I'm not going to add quite as much definition to them because I kind of want to let them be further back and not look like they're trying to be. I'm not trying to compete to be closer to the front by adding too much detail with them, to them. Give them a chance to kind of hang back a little bit more, those ones in the very back there. Let's see. Side of that 
be a little bit more, a little bit darker. All right, we're on the last 10 minutes of the stream, so I will now start, start doing the things. So just a reminder for those of you who are tuning in here at the end, I'm Amanda Call. This is my YouTube channel. I show up every Tuesday night to do one of these art streams where you can watch me draw, listen to me, give my commentary on my process, answer questions, that sort of thing. I upload other videos on here too on a regular basis, a couple times a month. Generally where I talk about different artwork or have like time lapses of me creating different things, that sort of fun stuff. So if all of that or any of that sounds good to you, then if you want to like this video and subscribe to the channel, I'd super duper appreciate it. Today I was working on this illustration. Uh, I'm very frequently working on pages from my webcomic Age of Night which updates every Wednesday at ageofnight.com. That's A-G-E-O-F-N-I-G-H-T dot com. Um, I'm not working on a page from that right now because I'm at the end of a chapter and it would be spoilery, so we're not doing that. I'm not doing spoilers live on the stream. But I will be re returning to those soon because I'm, I'm almost done with the chapter. You can also support my work on Patreon. So that's patreon.com slash age of night, spelled just like the comic. And you can follow me on Twitter at age of night and Instagram at Amanda Callart. Uh, I think, I think that's all the things, that's all the things I can think of right now. Sure, I'll probably think of something else as soon as the stream's done. Because that's just how life works. I am very close to being done with these lovely little flowers. Adding some yellow ochre here to add some depth to the color green on these stems. And I think I want to add just a little bit of like a brighter purple. Is that what I want? Is this the color that I want? I'm not sure if it is. I'm going to test it over here. Well, is that what I want? I think that's what I want. Just a little bit of that to a few spaces. Not everywhere, just a few spaces. Yeah, that's doing what I want it to do. That's doing what I wanted it to do. The camera is picking this up as being way more blue than it is. It's much warmer than it looks on here. I'll have to upload a picture of this to my Instagram as soon as the stream is over so that you can see what it actually looks like. It's not that blue, I promise you. Because, yeah, those purples are coming out like all the way blue on the camera and they are nowhere near that blue. I mean, they're, they're blue toned, but they're not as blue as this is making it look.
right, I think that's pretty much gonna do it. So there we go. Over the course of two streams, about two hours, went from a blank piece of paper to this nice little completed illustration. So thanks everybody for hanging out and leaving comments and watching me while I work. And I will see you guys all next time. Bye.